Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 273. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have a team dig from Felicia Gladson and Jay the Brain Man. Win games backslash og backslash win underscore tab. I'm a little worried this is not going to be a game, and it's just going to be like some kind of thing for tabbing between programs or something, but we'll see. Um, 100 kilobytes, read me first, win tab, help, exe, what's the first say? Russian roulette. Uh, that is the last combination of two words I expected to see when opening something in a folder called WinTab. <laughs> Holy jeez. Um, Game Essence. The Game Essence is that the player fills on his card symbols identical to those appearing in the game field. What does that have to do with Russian Roulette? Wait, symbols on cards are numbers from 1 to 90 or colored figures? Their location can be regular or stochastic? <laughs> if the orientation option is on, the figure set is extended by variously oriented symbols. What kind of game even is this? Like, this doesn't sound like Russian Roulette. Doesn't sound like any form of solitaire I'm familiar with. <laughs> Cause it's not even, it's not using a standard deck if it's got the numbers from 1 to 90. Um, I'm not sure what we've got here. <laughs> Okay, so whatever this is, it was definitely made by a couple of Russians here. Um, Sergei Bobrov and Sergei Berenkov? I think I've got those right. Um, and they want $20 per copy for this Russian roulette, whatever it is. Because <laughs> clearly not what we're all expecting. So let's actually see what it is. Okay. Um, Aqua Game Pack from Russia. We got Colored Fish. Okay, it automatically maximized, off to a good start, centered on the thing. I'm pretty sure we're not going to see any guns in a moment, but what have we got here? About, um, just some more copyright info, um, index, um, game essence. So, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find like just some basic rules here, but it's kind of difficult because it doesn't have like a, a normal rules section. <laughs> Um, maybe with game process. At the beginning of the game, players can select optimal configuration using the options menu. Yeah, like, I mean, there's no real, um, this, this was the same issue in the, in the first file, is that there's no real rules to the game here. <laughs> like, it's just the descriptions of pieces of the rules. Which the, wait, did the game just disappear on me? Uh, the game just crashed, and I wasn't even touching it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Unless it, like, closed for some reason? That was bizarre. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just try playing it. Let's go to the options here. Um, one line full, make it one player against the computer, apparently. Um, we can have pictures or numbers on the deck. We can also have the orientation thing going. Organization, standard, or stochastic. We'll just do standard. I'm not going to worry about the jokers. So, sound is on. New game. Um, number of cards. Uh, guess one? Whoa, this doesn't look like anything I was expecting. <laughs> and the game just crashed again. Uh, this is going to be tricky to, <laughs> tricky to talk about if the game is just going to insta-close every five, if, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, it's, it's, I'm not even sure if it's crashing because it's not giving any error messages. It's just closing. Oh, right. It's still in two player mode. Um, options, one player, da, 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 da. okay, so game, new game. Okay, let's see if we can figure this out, maybe. So, what can I click on? The spacebar? No. Okay, did I successfully click on something? I don't know. 
Uh, what about this? No. I'm not really sh Okay, hitting spacebar just made that appear in my deck of cards here. Though it's kind of weird that I'm seeing all the other players' cards too. Spacebar is just making me lose money at the, my, the, the game's crashed again. <laughs> So I've been doing some testing, and I'm noticing that it's crashing after exactly 52 seconds every single time. So I'm not sure why that's happening. Like, it could just be an emulation thing. But the simple fact is, is that whatever this game is supposed to be, I can't figure out how this actually works. Like, the computer is clearly doing stuff, and I can hit spacebar, which makes me lose money, but no matter where the mouse cursor is, it's like... Yeah, I just don't get this. And then within the next few seconds, the game should just disappear entirely just like that, yeah. Okay, so I think we've had enough of this one. Um... For some reason, the file's called WinTab, yet the actual game is called Russian Roulette, yet it has nothing to do with actual Russian Roulette, or Roulette that happens to be Russian, or anything like that. It's just like some weird game where you just click on... Like, I don't know what's going on, the rules aren't telling me what's going on, or how to play this properly. And then the computer's still making things happen, even though I'm pretty sure I did not turn the computer player on just now. <laughs> so, is this even working properly? I don't know. This is weird. Next up, from JP Ronnie, we've got win games backslash solitaire backslash sol win. Okay, how much does anyone want to bet that this someone just took the Windows solitaire and put it on this disc? Like, I would not put it past Softkey to do something stupid like that, but... Well, you gotta read me. You got a registration. We got a file ID.diz. Maybe this is its own thing? Anyway, Solitaire for Windows. Oh, computer entertainment program is like... <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's... Let's take it all in here. Solitaire for Windows. A computer entertainment program is like no other. It's ideal for the solitaire enthusiast being both fun and addictive. That is all you're getting for your file ID.diz. Okay, what's the readme say here? So description of solitaire for Windows. Computer, complete solitaire for Windows computer entertainment program is like no other. It's ideal for the solitaire enthusiast. Okay, that's what the file ID.diz said. So apparently it has 12 solitaire card games, four solitaire tours, a design your own solitaire tour and share them with friends. Um, some different card decks, different playing boards. So basically, this is supposed to be a souped up version of solitaire. Um, well, I, I did notice down here that the file size is actually pretty significant for, for this, for what is going to be a solitaire game. So maybe there is a bunch of stu stuff here. Uh, what's the registration say? So, registration goes to Interplay? Interplay. Freaking Interplay made this? Okay, I'm just trying to comprehend for a moment that Interplay had anything to do with a Windows Solitaire game with a file date of 19, of sometime in 1992. <laughs> um, like, Hadn't Interplay been around for a bit and was already doing, like, proper games? What are they doing messing with Windows Solitaire? Okay, I think what we're dealing with here is that this might be a Wares copy of the game. But then if that's true, why is there this registration form thing? And, hold on, registration form? All this says is name, address, city, phone number. Please send me information on how I can... And purchase the complete solitaire for Windows product. Return it. Wait, this isn't even a form to actually register the game. This is just a form to get registration info for registering the game. <laughs> this is so confusing. Okay, let's just run this thing and see if it makes any sense. Okay, so it is a demo version. We figured that much out. And it decided to start in the upper corner for whatever reason. 
Okay, so I guess this is legitimate. I guess. Well, it does have so it, uh, its own um, custom card symbols there. Um, okay. Okay. This looks like it's probably probably a proper program. Okay, so Interplay definitely didn't produce this. It says here that it was developed by Software Resources International, which apparently it was a Brad Ferger, Michael Sandage, and a Dennis Ferger. So a couple brothers and someone else. So I guess that's, that's the weird thing too. It says here to register for Solitaire for to register for Solitaire for Windows. Go to the Windows Program Manager, access the notepad, and open the file solreg.txt, which simply had you send something to Interplay so that they would send you registration info. Like, we don't even have a price for this thing. Wait, wait, wait. The help file here. Maybe we've got pricing, and, and no, we don't. <laughs> Why would I expect pricing details? I only want to purchase the thing. Well, actually, no, I'm being facetious. I don't actually want to purchase this, but... <laughs> Okay, this is this is getting way off the rails here for a solitaire program. I will say, looking at this stuff here, it looks like there's a is indeed a lot of features here. So maybe that's why Interplay was willing to publish this, put their name on it, and everything. Even though it's very clear the authors did not speak proper English, so I mean that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just weird because Interplay is an it, it's an American company. Like, it doesn't make sense that they would not fix the English on something before putting it out there. Like, that's what's so weird about this. Oh, and apparently we can't adjust any of the preferences in this demo version. Um, we can do a card drag feature so that we can actually see the cards or see an outline or just not see anything. Um, we've got traditional and challenge scoring. We can do time play, which I can't adjust for whatever reason. And we can get an idea of what games there are in here. So the three that are included in this demo version are Golf, Klondike, and Scorpion. Um, I don't actually know most forms of solitaire. Like, I think I could probably figure out Golf if I had to. But I've never heard of Scorpion. What's that one look like? That one just looks bizarre. Yeah, I'm not gonna, let's just stick with Klondike. Just to make sure that it actually plays like you would expect. Okay, it automatically turns over a card when you when it reveals one, so that's interesting. Okay, it's also interesting that when you pick up a pile, it actually condenses the pile to just show the, the first and last card. So that's kind of interesting. Um, still moving some cards around here. It actually gave me a pretty decent spread to start with. Uh, oh, I don't like when a game does that. Okay, so normally I'm used to, in Solitaire, being able to actually pull cards off of the final piles, because sometimes you actually do need to do that to actually make progress, but this doesn't let you. So that's not good. Yeah, just the way these cards are coming up, I almost feel like this has been intentionally designed to produce a winnable spread which like card game solid solitaire games nowadays tend to do that like I've, I've seen the modern windows solitaire like the microsoft solitaire and it actually gives you a skill level selection the idea being that it's going to generate a spread that it knows is either going to be easy or challenging or completely random you can have it set to completely random, and then you don't know if it's going to be winnable or not. But the idea is, is that every spread it produces under a normal difficult, under any of the regular difficulty settings, is going to be winnable to some degree. So, I almost, it, it like feels like that this game is doing that. Just the way the cards are coming up just gives me that sensation. See, now here's the thing. If I move this three to here, and then a four of hearts comes up that I would be able to put here, or a four of diamonds. Well, four of hearts I could just put up here, but if a four of diamonds came up and this three was stuck on here and I couldn't move it off, then this two would also be stuck down here. 
So, like, I mean, that's one of the things I'm not liking here is that be, is not being able to pull cards off of these piles here. So, I, I'm, I could move to three here, but I'm scared to do it. <laughs> yeah, look what just happened. There's that four. And now I can't pull this three off so I can get this two out of the way. Oh, well, that's a dick move. <laughs> the undo feature is blocked behind registration. <laughs> really, game? Really? Yeah, I accidentally, when I saw the five, I accidentally put the four up there, and it was like, no, I wanted that four there so I could get that three off, but now I can't undo it, and it's... Argh. I don't wait, the Ace of Diamonds is right there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have trouble getting that out. <laughs> um, hmm. Cuz... The Eight of Hearts seems... Yeah, it's the Eight of Hearts that's buried under one of these. And we can't get that out without moving the Two or the Nine. Which means we are pretty screwed at this point. Um, is there a native clubs? There is native clubs. So I can possibly finagle something here. Well, now I got nowhere to move this nine. Okay, so this this didn't work out. But the the thing is, this has definitely got a lot of features to it for a solitaire game. Um, hiding the undo past beyond registration was kind of mean, <laughs> but. <laughs> And that's the that's the weird thing about this is that this has all the trappings of a proper proper commercial product yet it's being distributed as semi shareware where it doesn't tell you how much the registration is which unless you actually like send in your details and then they send you the registration info so we have no idea how much this was being charged charge for the full version and then on top of that there's broken english in a lot of the stuff for this so it almost doesn't feel like something that came out of interplay and yet this clearly did i don't know this is just very weird and apparently there's also a volume two <laughs> add-on but yeah I guess we can take a look at some of these other boards. We got a wheat board, <laughs> in case you want your board to look like a bunch of pixelated wheat. And then we also got a Maya board, which is red and hurts my eyes. So we're going right back to that felt. <laughs> yeah, Solitaire for Windows by Interplay, made by developers who definitely were not English. So yeah, I'm not really sure what to think of this. But at the same time, this isn't really an offensive program. It's just, uh, it's just at a strange position between professional and not. And our last dig for today from Jacob Rudolph is DOS games backslash arcade backslash drag C2. I'm gonna get some kind of drag racing thing. Maybe. Um, well, drag city, that's... Um, well, I was about to say that's a good sign, but it's only an 88 kilobyte file. Is this even gonna have graphics? Good question. Anyways, let's edit readme.cty. It's too fancy to be a text file. Um, apparently made by uh, Richard Nicola from 91. Requires EGA or VGA, so if a mouse is present, it will be used. Keyboard may, keyboard may be used if you don't have a mouse. Okay. Um, apparently the author wants $10 for this. And not too too much else in here from the looks of it yeah there's no rules in here so maybe it's just really really simple when it comes down to it because we've also got the registration form but that doesn't really tell us much so okay i guess we're going right into it so direct oh no wait there's a drag city dot doc never mind <laughs> drag city dot doc what have we got here Welcome to Drag City USA, version 2.0. Your uncle died and has left you as dragster. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's not state of the art. In fact, it's a manual three-speed job with the engine in front of the driver. You've decided to cast good judgment aside and race it yourself. Yeah, that does sound like a very poor idea. Um, well, I like this. To invoke Drag City. 
<laughs> you don't see that word used very often in terms of computers. Invoke. It's as if they're magical or something. Normally we say execute, but nope, it's going to be invoke. Okay, we actually have command line options too. So hyphen M to disable mouse, hyphen S to disable sound. Hyphen L moves the tachometer to an alternate location. Wouldn't you have that as an in-game option? Same with the next one, tournament mode. Well, you know, that that is one thing. Um, some games, in order to simplify things and to allow people to set up, like, custom setups for their game without having to change settings in-game all the time, will have a whole bunch of command line options to set things up ahead of time. Heck, even Doom did this. So... Maybe that's what this is all for. And apparently we already know it's going to run in 640 by 350. Uh, why is there a difference between EGA and VGA at 640 by 350? The only difference this would actually make would be the amount of palette entries available. Because in EGA you'd be limited to 64 colors, in VGA you'd be limited to... Uh, what is it? 262,000 something? Did I get that right? I'll put the actual number on screen if I'm not. The text in this file is just weird. <laughs> Being a pleasant program, Drag City requests that players enter their names. You can either enter your first name, as requested, or just press enter, or a simple mouse click will do, in which case you will be known by the affectionate name Player1, Player2, and so on. If you specify all names via the switches above, you will bypass this request. Names are used to show whose turn it is and for posting entries to the history file. This, there's just some weird wording in here, like, being a pleasant program. Like, I, how is drag racing pleasant? <laughs> I'm pretty sure people who go to drag races specifically don't want it to actually be pleasant. Okay, so from the looks of it, this j literally has no steering whatsoever. This is all just about pressing the accelerator using the clutch. Um, I don't know if there's brakes. There might be. Um, well, let's actually just go into it, see what we got here. So, drag city. Okay, so we got one player, VGA, what, what, what did I just do? It's going through the text file, or the document. Oh, I think I know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bunch of shortcut keys on the screen right now and I was pushing the arrow keys thinking that I could like move the selection because it looked like help was selected um fun fact about pressing keyboard keys if a program is written in basic is that all of the function keys or any of the keys that don't produce a character output will instead produce a null character followed by a different character to indicate its position on the keyboard. And it just so happens that the up arrow is an H character, which probably toggled the help there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, um, can I turn sound on? Not letting me turn sound on. Um, also, what happened to the mouse? Oh, M key turns it on and off. Okay. Why won't it let me turn this out? Oh. <laughs> this is a very strange way of doing this. So... Yeah. Th <laughs> okay, so what we're seeing are not actually the, the shortcut keys. Rather, we're seeing the first character of the selection that's selected. And that first character is also the key you press to change the option. So to go EGA, we press E. To go VGA, we go V. Keyboard is K. Mouse control is M. Sound on is S. Sound off is O. And then there's F for friendly and T for tournament, which I can't enable, probably because I need more than one player. Okay, so this is weird. Let's run it, see where we end up. Player number one's first name. Um, I don't care. <laughs> Hang on. Why do I feel like we've seen this before? Like, this kind of looks familiar for some reason. 
I'm not sure if we've seen this on Shovelware Diggers itself, but I think I might have seen this game once before. In any case, um, how do I do anything? Okay. And I just blew my engine. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, we're accelerating. You seem to be doing this whole drag race thing okay. Okay. I think I I think I did something. <laughs> um I got reaction score of 0.55, 12 laps, uh top speed 153. Uh okay. And then apparently we can, Yeah, we have seen this before. I'm almost positive we've seen this before now. Oh, you know what? It was probably so long ago because I don't remember those text files at all, but I do remember that way back when I first started this series, I didn't look at the text files. I just ran the game and just went with it, right? So maybe that's why I didn't recognize it at first. So whatever. We'll actually, we'll, I'll leave this one in. We'll, we'll give it another go simply because of the fact that I'd never seen those text files before. <laughs> So I guess this is where we where we select our gear ratios for low, medium, and high. Um, okay, I'm gonna try these ratios. See where we end up. So I guess continue. Then we'll get ourselves ready to stage again. Then do our shifting. Okay, we actually went considerably faster that time. So I don't think there's really a way to do much else here. Like if we quit, it just brings us back to the DOS prompt. And yeah, I didn't really see a difference. Like it was on VGA, but it just looked like the standard palette. So I have no idea what this selection is going to do differently. So yeah, that was Drag City USA. It's um not really a drag racing game in the traditional sense. Like it definitely has that feel to it, but you don't seem to be doing any actual racing. This is just to see, um, just to see how fast you can go. Like, there's a tournament thing for multiple players, but yeah, that's really all there is to it. I guess that's apart from tweaking the gear ratios, but like, you don't upgrade yourself, you don't, you don't actually race against other dragsters, it's just do the length of track, see how fast you go, and then see if you can do it even faster. That's it.